It's Monday. It's June 3rd. And the word of the day is 34, which means one more than 33. Mm -hmm. Using a sentence, of all the felonies you can do on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, at least 34 (laughs) of them will get you convicted. I'll tell you, smoking 34 bowls to celebrate was tough, but I managed... He means cereal bowls, (laughs) podcast listener. He does a lot of drugs. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Eric Adams turns Manhattan into an empty refuge for cyborg billionaires. Alvin Bragg finds a witch. And Rudy Giuliani gets served a witch indictment while hiding behind his broomstick. (laughs) But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, are you ready to air horn? Yeah, 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 I have yeah, been air horny yeah, since yeah, Thursday, yeah. Heath. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> In our lead story yeah. tonight. Yeah. Guilty. Guilty. Guilty, oh. guilty, 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 guilty. You guys want in on some of this? Guilty, 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 guilty. Sixteen more guilties and guilty. That was the response from the New York jury guilty. tasked with deciding whether Donald Trump the committed rest a of the crime. Podcast, I'm just in the back. Yep, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a crime or thirty four crimes, I guess, in his effort to cover up his affair with Stormy Daniels. And I, I know that they were just reading off the thirty four various counts as they came in, but it felt like the newscasters were shouting guilty 34 times in a row just to emphasize how guilty he really was. And the video of them doing that is the reason I never need (laughs) porn again. Yeah. If you ever needed proof that news anchors aren't highly trained state actors or whatever they're supposed to be, watching everyone try to keep a straight face while delivering this news (laughs) is a great start down that path. Walter Cronkite cracked a smile. He's dead. Like, it was the best. They all looked like... (laughs) Matt Foley, motivational speaker, was yelling right next to them just out of the yeah. frame, and David uh-huh. Spade can't keep his shit together. It's the best. So, yeah, so I, I'm sure our listeners already all know the details of the case, but given the sheer magnitude of indictments against Trump, I feel like I should remind everybody exactly which one we're talking about here. Uh, this is the case where Trump was indicted for paying off Stormy Daniels so that he wouldn't have yet another sex scandal in the closing weeks of his 2016 campaign. He then lied about that expenditure and falsified records to hide what rightly should should be considered a campaign contribution, which is illegal. Um, And just a quick reminder uh, that according to the legal experts I'm reading, of the four criminal cases pending against him right now, this one was both the least likely to end in conviction and the least serious if it did. And given his perfect track record of failure in the courts at this point, I feel like that's the best part, really. Yeah. And look, if you've been following along with this case, the only reason this ended in 34 perfect convictions is because Trump and his cronies kept fucking signing affidavits on camera saying, we are doing crimes right <laughs> oh now. Oh my God. Here's a list of the following crimes we're doing. Okay, boss, we're all wearing a wire right now. We can just see each other all wearing wires. Let's sign a contract that says... No narking about crimes on each other. <laughs> so I'll well, scan. I'll email all of us a copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a big part of it. Another big part of it was the fact that Donald Trump kept making his lawyers sprinkle in his stump speech during their cross examinations and shit. <laughs> so obviously, this was a cause for great celebration at the Lusions household and yours as well. I'm sure, unless you live with people who suck. In which case, honestly, it was probably even more satisfying. And the very best part for me, <laughs> just them being silent and angry. You're just dancing oh, past yeah. the uh-huh. stare yeah. and hard Throwing eye contact. Throwing petals around the house. Yeah, uh-huh. Just dancing right across Fox News How's on your TV. day, Uncle? That's your well, day. Then, well, that was the best part, right? Because right after they announced the verdict, uh, Captain Comover shuffled out afterwards to give his little rebuttal. And he spoke for a total of 98 seconds. He described the trial during that 98 seconds as a disgrace four times and as rigged five times. Or, or sorry, he said the trial was rigged four times and the country was rigged once. Uh, he said that he was not just innocent, <laughs> but country? very innocent. The whole country is rigged. Um, he called the judge corrupt and conflicted and said the country was going to hell. Uh, He also said that millions of terrorists were pouring into our country from prisons and mental institutions. 
Uh, no word on whether they were on his front lawn hiding behind the trees, but I assume they must be. Yeah, I did think it was weird that that Mexican sanitarium slash prison releases people via catapult into the United right, States. But yeah. that's me. You know, that's me. Okay, to Trump's credit, though, he didn't mention the globalist conspiracy of Jewish bankers against him for over half an entire minute of that speech. <laughs> yes, right, yeah. But, but then he called Alvin Bragg a Soros DA. Sure the fuck did, yeah. It was actually 34 seconds into the speech. Oh, was it? Which yeah. I thought was Didn't quite make it Kanye halfway. Kanye West in the audience, not cool, man, not yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so in the minutes and days after the verdict, he's, he's put all his efforts into painting the entire process as corrupt. After five weeks of complaining that the trial was taking too long, he switched to complaining that it didn't take long enough. He said that, quote, a lot of key witnesses were not called, end quote. <laughs> But despite his caterwauling to the contrary, like it was his defense's decision how many yeah, fucking you have as many as witnesses <laughs> they would call, right? And they called two. And one of them got caught in a lie and later the courtroom had to be cleared so the judge could ream his ass for his behavior on the <laughs> yeah. stand. I just I don't I don't think that more witnesses was gonna help. I gave him a list of a hundred witnesses who saw me truifying business records, constantly <laughs> truifying. They never called any of them. Sarah wanted to do a trial by combat, and honestly, I feel like that was the way to go yes. in retrospect. <laughs> Now, of course, despite the mountains of publicly available evidence and jury of his peers, Republican leaders are lining up behind Trump human centipede style to shit out his claims of political persecution. House Speaker Mike Johnson dismissed the charges as, quote, purely political, end quote, and called it a, quote, shameful day in American history, end quote. Uh, both of which are true, but neither in the direction that he intended them. House Majority <laughs> Leader and guy who fucking bleeds too slow steve scalise said the conviction was quote a defeat for americans who believe in the critical legal tenet that justice is blind end quote and with all the rhetorical flair that we've come to expect from his lineage don jr called the verdict quote such bullshit end quote such bullshit like he got detention yeah no, he's like such be. bullshit gall Okay, my favorite part of this, though, is that Trumpers online keep getting tricked into looking up Trump porn because people on Twitter keep telling them to look up Rule 34 Trump to see how he can get out of this. It's <laughs> the best. Someone on Mastodon told me that, and it's all I've been reading for the nice. last seven or eight days. <laughs> nice. So the next step here, of course, is sentencing, uh, which is going to come on July 11th. And as soon as this news broke, social media started filling up with all these naysayers talking about how he's never going to see any real content consequences and to be sure it's it's very unlikely he'll go to jail i don't even know if it's very unlikely but it's unlikely they'll go to jail the thing he was convicted of is not the kind of crime that people normally go to jail over he pissed the judge off enough he might all right but it's his first conviction odds are he won't but i also want to note that those he'll never see any real consequences folks they just shifted to that message from he'll never be convicted Right. And before that, it was he'll never be indicted. And before that, it was that he would never be found guilty in the civil trial for fraud. And before that, it was that he would never be found guilty in the civil trial for defamation. And before that, it was that he would never lose reelection. OK, fine. But sorry, I was moving these goalposts. He's going to get the biggest scoop of mashed potatoes in the prison lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's okay. why I don't have to vote for Joe Biden is because he got a big scoop. Whose side are you people on? The isolationist Christian bankers? We're taking a W. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, thank you. And look, but I, I understand where it comes from. Because when Trump won in 2016, none of us were prepared for that. It crushed a lot of people emotionally and psychologically. And I think this irrational negativity is largely a defense mechanism against getting caught off guard like that again. And that's fine, right? Like, I do whatever you have to do to keep yourself healthy. But as soon as you start putting that negativity out into the world, you're robbing people of their catharsis in a moment where they've earned it, right? You're, you're, and you're doing it with very little evidence on your side. Trump has a perfect track record of loss in the courts, whether whether it's him or his surrogates, whether they're the plaintiff or the defendant, whether it's civil or criminal. And yes, this conviction isn't going to change the mind of his supporters, but the words convicted felon still hold some sway with that tiny sliver of undecided voters that are probably going to swing this election. I'm not saying that he's going to lose because of it, but I am saying that it matters and that it's okay to hope. And while we're on the subject of moments that you want to revisit over and over and over again, we need to take a quick break for a word from this week's first sponsor, Aura Frames. Okay, and do you gift wrap? No. Okay, I can wrap it when it gets here. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Eli. What you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. I was just doing some Father's Day shopping for Heath. Oh, uh, yeah? 
yeah, he's new to the kind of sort of stepfatherhood game, so he needs to supply up. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Supply up? Uh, yeah. I got him an old t-shirt with too many holes to wear around the house, uh, old man long johns to walk around in in winter, and of course, the seminal work, I'm not sleeping, I'm just resting my eyes. There's so much great advice in here. Okay, but Eli, if you want to get the kind of sort of stepdad in your life a present that he'll love, why don't you get him an aura frame? What's an aura frame? Aura frames are beautiful Wi-Fi connected digital frames that allow you to share and display unlimited photos. It's super easy to upload and share photos via the Aura app. And if you're giving Aura as a gift, you can even personalize the frame with preloaded photos and memories. Wow, that sounds great. It is. And right now, Aura has a great deal for Father's Day. Listeners can save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com to get $30 off their best-selling frame. That's A-U-R-A Frames.com. This deal ends June 18th, so don't wait. Use the code SKEPTOCRAT at checkout to save. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Noah, thanks. Oh, quiet, here comes Heath. Hey, Heath, so um, did the Hallmark store have that uh, card you were looking for? Hey, yeah, no, not a single kind of sort of stepchild situation card in the entire place crazy no way right it's nuts and we're back next up in headlines in ny see you later news whether it be the intake of breath before steve jumps off kyle's roof or the seconds before a semi-truck hits a pigeon there's something beautiful about the moment before a disaster a stillness in the air, as everyone's confidence feels total, perfect, and serene. And that's how it feels as we count down to the start of New York City's brand new congestion pricing. Okay, this, really? is, this is an unequivocally good idea that should have been done decades ago. Sorry, yes, I, I, I know we're supposed to do jokes and yes and one another, but I'm checking out of the rules of comedic chivalry long <laughs> enough to applaud New York City for this one. <laughs> And I'm checking back in. I'm yes anding Noah. Yes. And also, <laughs> Eli's just mad because giving up and moving to Jersey got a bit more expensive. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah. So let me say at the outset that this little plan just doubled the cost of me going into the city for my fun little trips. So I'm admittedly pretty biased, but. You don't come here to the Skeptocrat for truth. You come here to sympathize with my commute. And, and also, Noah and Heath only like this idea because a nerd thought of it. Like that 365 degree calendar thing or going to outer space. What? what I'm saying is there are two equally valid takes about this issue and you should make your own decisions after hearing me out because it's my story. How, so how many degrees do you think there are in calendars now? Zero. Here we go. So the short version <laughs> is that starting June 30th, cars entering New York City below 60th Street between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. will pay a $15 congestion price for passenger vehicles. More for commercial vehicles like trucks. Taxis will pay $1.25 paid by their customers. And Ubers and Lyfts will pay $2.50. And the hope is that this will reduce traffic in the busiest parts of Manhattan while bolstering the use of public transit systems and raising money for development and improvement. Well, yeah, no, you like it's like how every time that they raise the fares on the subways, the subway system gets better. It'll be like that, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, I like that we're clearly trying to phase out Staten Island as a borough. <laughs> <laughs> the Republican with this yeah. thing. Um, they're all driving in from the south into lower Manhattan, so they're paying the fee every time. And now a bunch of Republican leaders from Staten Island are trying to complain, talking about environmental justice and disproportionate effects on minority communities after, you know, learning those words like last week. Right. These topics are worth discussing, but not with fucking Vito Facella, the Republican <laughs> borough president of Staten Island. Absolutely yeah, I think not. his heart might not be in it. Yeah. Now, I want to be fair and say the first objection that came to my mind has already been thought of, right? The MTA just opened its application portal for discounts and exemption plans for households earning less than $50,000 a year, for disabled individuals, for emergency vehicles, buses and commuter vans, and specialized government vehicles. So as much as I'm not a fan of this program, it's not in danger of being stopped by Paw Patrol levels of evil. Well, or, or even profoundly immoral or wicked levels of evil, which is- or <laughs> The definition is it? of that word because that's pretty much where the good <laughs> things about this program end. Yeah, don't worry i got i got you boo first when they were testing how this would affect low-income folks they said it would only affect five thousand people which 
isn't no people fact mm-hmm. on top of that it the also only helps people, some low-income people yeah, sure does. different Sh- no it doesn't on exactly. top of that the only people they counted as affected were people who made less than 50 grand who commuted into the city by car five days a week which obviously doesn't count the significant number of folks who make under 50 gay who commute less than that and it doesn't count someone who makes fifty thousand and one dollars a year for whom 15 extra dollars five days a week is just over seven percent of their income well, or or that person could use public transit for yes, less than exactly. they would just already be paying before this. Right. And they'd also save approximately, I don't know, their entire fucking salary on parking. Oh, so my like, God. Yeah, yeah right. Making a lot of money there. Or many, saving like eight hours a day trying to park for many, free in lower Manhattan in the middle of the na- day. Get the fuck out of here. Now, naysayers who are bad at Kungalingus might say, I'm keeping me saying Kungalingus. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I think it adds the gravitas to my argument I was oh, hoping no, for. It's, got, it's where, where, where you get the tongue a little more involved well, you, than well, usual. It's what you're doing when you're like a human centipede thing. Eli does the Cyrillic of, alphabet sometimes. And he gets confused. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the solution to this problem, as suggested by my co-hosts, is public transportation. And while the fees might be ready to go into effect June 30th, the MTA is uh, definitely not, right? The subways continue to be more dangerous than they have been in years, with politicians refusing to acknowledge that unhousing a bunch of people in mental health and addiction crisis during COVID has become a problem. Trains in and out of the fee zone are regularly delayed by an hour or more, and the George Washington Bridge, which is predicted to see 50 percent more traffic at least Ugh. is the george washington yeah, it was already the jo- yeah <laughs> yeah so okay so hold on a second you're telling me that because of this people commuting in and out of new york might have to start dealing with delays with exactly. like traffic yeah, that delays? sounds terrifying so is there any chance they're gonna make like i don't know top of my head like a billion dollars a year in revenue which might help with i don't know any number of problems now it has been said <laughs> By my co-host and also the city of New York, that this plan is going to bring in a billion dollars of revenue. Like every city, year? Like exactly what I said? Which That's awesome. the city okay. will use to improve public transportation. But as three former New Yorkers can assure you, if they're being honest and if they're looking into their heart with their Care Bear stare, the chances of that happening are about as good as getting a subway car all to yourself without discovering a human shit smeared across half the seats. And as recent history has shown, improve the MTA sometimes means bring in the National Guard to stop and frisk people as yeah. a callback to the least legal parts of the early aughts. Yeah, no, I, t- I feel like we can at least all agree that that part's bullshit. They're not improving. Second that. Avenue subway line is on the way, <laughs> I've been assured. <laughs> They're doing the whole thing. Yeah. They're making it go all to the, all the boroughs. Rockland, Westchester. It's going to be awesome. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. So, yeah. I really hope I'm wrong about this. Uh, Two thirds of the podcast is pretty sure that I am. I hope this program works out great and that me and my new best friend, the people who ride the New Jersey Transit, get along great. But I have a feeling a homeless guy is going to set me on fire and Eric Adams is going to build a death laser for the Hoyt Shimmerhorn stop as a result. Okay. So uh, consider this my called shot podcast yes, yeah. listener. The, the important takeaway is that homeless people are frightening. Yeah, they're so. dangerous and scary. Thank you, <laughs> Noah. Lud- I tried to sort of <laughs> pussyfoot around that point, but then No <laughs> Illusions is the one who said it as his opinion <laughs> here on our podcast at yeah. last. Also, it's Shermerhorn. That's the most important thing. How dare you? <laughs> and in at least Houston. I did better than lettuce news. <laughs> <laughs> UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, for a little bit longer, might be thinking about committing 34 felonies because he's polling very badly right now, along with his conservative party. But despite that very big deficit, he just called for a general election to be held on July 4th. Apparently, they just call it like like a new rule in a children's game, and then everybody scrambles to do a nationwide election in a month. It sounds delightful. It Mm -hmm. sounds so amazing, especially because everything seems to be going so very badly for Sunak and the Tories, and it's almost certain the Labor Party will very easily take over. So you guys figure July 4th is just the day the ruling party in Britain is best at getting its ass kicked or something? Right? Yeah, the the Brits are nothing (laughs) if not dramatically ironic. I guess. Okay, so the big question for Sunak is, why would you call an election when you're wildly unpopular and you're definitely going to lose? The Tories are behind in the polls by about 20 points right now. So 
Lots of his own party members are furious, and political analysts are throwing around words like lunacy and absurd and what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> By law, Sunak did have to call an election at some point before January 28th of next year. But the assumption was he'd be holding off for a while, hoping the polls would move in his favor. But apparently there's a very significant worry that conservatives are going to go from wildly unpopular with voters to we eat you now with voters. So they had to take a, a shot right away on this. So now they have a month to come up with some kind of PR spin on the abject failure of Sunak, Liz Truss for 45 days, Boris Johnson, Brexit, and the overall conservative philosophy. <laughs> Fun fact, listeners, we recorded a GAM episode with Marsh on the day that Sunak announced this, and we had to stop like every 15 minutes so he could squeal with glee at the news of yet another Tory who announced they weren't seeking re-election. <laughs> yeah, truly my favorite part of British politics is the updates we get from Marsh, right? I'm just living my life in the U.S., hoping Trump doesn't start concentration camps, and he's like, frolling like has gone for labor and i'm like good for you buddy <laughs> so the collapse of a terrible ruling party is great but my favorite part was the official announcement of the election by sunak because everything went wrong and he looked so sad when he did it the first mistake was doing a press conference outside the pm's office at 10 downing street because the moment sunak got to the podium it started pouring rain well, yeah, but to be fair to him, what are the odds that it would start raining in London? Yeah, right. never could have seen that coming. And also, they have a dedicated room inside of a building for exactly this purpose. But Sunak wanted to look rugged or something. It did not. Man work. of the people. Yeah, he got completely soaked in his suit. You're not going to look rugged no matter what. If you watch the video of the speech and just turn off the audio, just watch him. It looks like a guy standing outside his ex-girlfriend's window yelling a very sad poem that he just <laughs> wrote in the rain. It's the best. Well, and as Marsh pointed out, his whole pitch in the speech is, but we have a plan. Yeah, things look bad now, but we have a plan. And that is wildly undercut by the fact that he didn't even plan far enough ahead to have a dude with an umbrella there. Yeah. <laughs> the other big problem about the outdoor announcement it allows your enemies to fuck with you a lot more easily. And that includes activist Stephen Bray, who brought two big speakers and blasted out Things Can Only Get Better, which was a big theme song in the 1997 general election win for the Labor Party and Tony Blair. Mr. Bray was eventually banned from every street surrounding the area by the cops, but everyone got to watch Rishi Sunak announce the demise of the current conservative government and watch him get visibly angry at hearing things can only get better in the background very clearly. And then he finished talking. He stood there in the pouring rain a bit longer, hoping for applause. He got like one guy it's clapping insane. begrudgingly. However funny and then you he picture the sound being, it's 10 times funnier. Yeah, it's podcast the listening. best. <laughs> then about 10 minutes later, Labor Party leader Keir Starmer gave a speech from... Uh, inside a structure with a roof and walls, oh, call. explaining very calmly that they're happy to take over. Yeah. Look, I know we're the party that suggested do you want to break up with Europe and the dumb half of the country said yes. But that was the last time we ask your opinion. We <laughs> promise, loves. We <laughs> promise we do. Is that Keir Starmer? That was Keir Starmer. That was okay. my impersonation of what that name might sound like based on <laughs> no. No, I don't even know the gender of that person. Okay, so even when conservatives are in power, there's plenty for America to be jealous about when we look at the UK. Uh, socialized medicine, way less religion, delightful accents, but also a much higher level of political banter. So we got some great responses to Sunak's beautifully tragic moment in the rain. One just said, 10 Drowning Street. Excellent. That's amazing. Yeah. Some, somebody called him Drizzly Adams. I like that. And... <laughs> Moments after Sunak left the podium, we got the etymology of the day from my favorite lexicographer, Susie Dent, who tweeted, explode is the poor relative of applaud. It comes from the Latin for slow hand clapping an inadequate performer off the stage. <laughs> 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 Fucking mwah. Well Great done. work. And speaking of the people who did Brexit, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Help. 
This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And that's when you say, oh, I've got a cake here that I know he's going to love. And then I eat it? No, Janabar Ige. You guys lost me. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Trump. You wanted to see me? Oh, there he is, Tyler, big guy. Get in here. How you doing, champ? I'm okay, sir. This guy, he's always okay, no matter what we throw at him. How do you do it? Well, sir, I, I work on myself in therapy. Therapy? I thought that was just to hypnotize you, to throw away the bellman. Nope, it's not. I, whatever you said, therapy is great for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries or even just work on your outlook. Man, I could use a little of that right now. You sure could, sir. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Okay, so if my therapist says to me, you can't see me anymore because you won't stop bringing up the time your brother killed a dog. Like, like in a good way. Yeah, that- yeah in that case, they would find you another one for free. Yes. Amazing. Take a moment. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, TIE Fighter, thanks. Now, can you think of a frosting that Sarah wouldn't eat? Yeah, we're completely stumped. Uh, diversity? Ooh, is that a flavor? Might be. I had a Buddhist once. Yeah, Tyler, look and see if there's a Buddhist flavor. Will do, sir. Will do. And we're back next up in headlines in artificial intelligence news. Google tried to roll out a new feature called AI overviews last week, and that went not super great. Uh, In fact, it served as a potent reminder that fears of artificial intelligence may be a bit premature and better spent fearing artificial stupidity for the time being. And we learned that when Google's new AI encouraged people to put glue on their pizza, said it was fine to eat rocks, called Obama a Muslim, and (laughs) claimed that Buzz Aldrin released cats on the moon. Exactly. Two delicious recommendations and two truths they don't want you to know about. What are you (laughs) afraid of, no illusions? So yeah, so clearly Google rushed this one to market. As weird as it feels to say that Google was worried about Bing, they actually kind of were. Bing rolled out AI-enhanced searches over a year ago. OpenAI is reportedly working on their own search engine, and there's another AI search engine startup that's being valued at over a billion dollars by investors already. So obviously Google felt the need to catch up, and they rolled out the exact kind of thing that you expect a behemoth panicking company in a hurry to roll out, and it was hilariously bad. Yeah, what they have right now is a worse version of ChatGPT that skims the Google results and then yells their summary at you like a foreboding text from a Jewish mother. Just like, (laughs) here's storms coming this weekend. You okay? (laughs) Then it declared Bing its mortal enemy. It tried to get Google to make a Zune competitor for spite. It's really (laughs) brutal out overall. Now, to be clear, a lot of the hilariously wrong answers from Google's AI that you might have seen online are probably bullshit, right? We don't know. Like, Google got to work right away manually removing some of the worst ones. But the very nature of a large language learning model, which is the technology behind this kind of AI, is such that it won't always be able to reproduce the same results by asking it the same questions, which means there's often no way of verifying if a result that someone's sharing is real, Right. So like if you're wondering why I'm not mentioning your favorite in my examples, it's probably because I wasn't able to find a reliable source for it. But suffice to say, the whole thing was such an embarrassing failure that Google largely disabled it after less than a week. Yeah, but don't worry. They did add Google AI to all Google Docs in the top right corner. So whenever I'm done typing a joke, I can ask it to do literally anything in that document. And it just says no to me. So that's good. (laughs) Every fucking time. (laughs) Okay. Eli pasted a screenshot from his interaction with Google Gemini, but... I don't, I don't think he knows what exactly happened here. I don't know why he posted this. He wrote, hey, Gemini, help improve my jokes. And then Gemini responded with a big paragraph of Noah's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what it was. I don't, I don't think it knows whose lions were. Thank which, you. No illusions. <laughs> no, of course. The company's official line at this point is just that they need to tweak a few things and it'll be ready for prime time. But I've seen a lot of experts who are pretty dubious, and I'm no expert, but so am I. The thing is, Google is pretending that a system that gets 95% of the answers right is 95% of the way finished. That's not how this shit works. 
right? The technology behind these systems is such that they have no way of knowing whether the thing that they're saying to you is true. And, and developing an artificial fact checker, that would be an entirely different project that would require entirely new technology that we're nowhere near. And the idea that you're just going to fucking manually correct the system every time it tells people to eat glue is insane if you want it to be remotely cost effective. Right. Yeah. It, to use a metaphor, large language models are a bingo ball machine and Google just announced that it's going to work as a calculator any second. Yes, now. right. <laughs> well okay. done, well, the the eating glue kind of works itself out in payroll, right? Mm -hmm. And now I just keep thinking about ways to use AI to purge the idiots. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I heard it. I heard it. Yep, it's, yep. it's time to rain <laughs> This it is how it's you get Terminator, damn uh -huh. it. Um, anyway, so this is yet another example of a tech company learning that building a robot that can pass the bar is not the same thing as building a lawyer. But given how often we've seen them learn this lesson... There's no reason to assume that it's going to stick this time. I am sure that before next year, I'll have a similar story about Google teaming up with the army to give this motherfucker a gun. And they gave the robot dog a flamethrower. Yeah, too late. they it's did. It's too late. They did. And in civically impossible news, regular listeners to this program may remember back in April when Florida governor and aspiring Hulk Hogan villain Ron DeSantis signed legislation requiring all Florida students to be taught, quote, the dangers and evils of communism, end quote. Well, the results are in, and surprise, surprise, it's a slideshow comparing cancel culture to the mass murders of Joseph Stalin. Oh, for okay. fuck. Uh, they're both things that Republicans are terrified of without knowing anything about. <laughs> there, that's a comparison. Do I, do I get some of the money, Ronnie? Uh, they both have nothing to do with the economic system called communism. <laughs> they sure don't. Yeah. They sure don't. Right. So these slides come to us from the Florida Freedom to Read Project, uh, which received them from the Florida Department of Education after filing a public records request. And the very first slide is titled Terroristic and All-Powerful Security Services, the Original Cancel Culture. <laughs> Adding at the bottom, warning, no one is ever safe, especially the cancellor. Oh, my fuck. If that was just a threat that DeSantis was, was issuing, that would at least be honest, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the slide has a list of all the terrible murder campaigns by fascist governments, but they had to leave out the literal holocaust from that list because it wasn't communist directly and it fucks uh -huh. up their stupid point. The title of the slide is, again... Terrorist and all powerful security services. Yes. SS. Mm -hmm. And they didn't mention the SS. Right. Yeah. And I know that's like Schlusenslampf, but it's like it's security it's service. That's what it was. Yes. Yep. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, Eli, obviously comparing Stalin to cancel culture is silly, but how is the imprisonment of artists by the Czech government like getting a naughty boy letter for your tweets? I'm glad <laughs> you asked. Because that brings us to a slide titled Enduring Marxist Communist Themes, Self-Censoring and Compelled Speech to Retain Employment or Freedom, which compares the imprisonment of Vaclav Havel to, that's right, Jordan Peterson. Oh my fucking yep, God. Who, according to the slide, quote, and again, this is a quote from the slide, Tweets about a transgender actress ran afoul of Ontario's College of Psychologists. The college ordered Peterson to complete a mandatory specified continuing education or remedial program. Peterson has refused to be re-educated. Oh, yeah, no, that's pretty much a gulag. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing <laughs> in that they're fucking spread out over the interior of a large northern country. After that, though, yeah, right. well, hockey is there near in both right uh putin putin similar sounding <laughs> yeah, words but you're probably wondering eli has cancel culture done a murder yes the answer <laughs> is really? very obviously yes has as it? these slides point out in the case of a super cool dude who i think we all feel super bad for uncw professor mike adams uh who listeners might remember for tweeting on may 29th of 2020 Quote, this evening I ate pizza and drank beer with six guys at a six-seat tabletop. I almost feel like a free man who was not living in the slave state of North Carolina. Massa Cooper, let my people go. End and tweet. This Yikes. is this is the guy we're supposed to be sympathizing with in their story. This, this is the good guy. This okay. is the good so guy. So white guy. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. So well, you listen to how sad it turned out for him. Okay, so Adams retired from UNCW a couple of weeks later with only a five hundred thousand dollars settlement from the university to compensate Jesus him. And then later he killed himself, just like in Stalinist <laughs> Russia. People did kill said themselves. It's gonna be a sad ending. Yeah, Stalinist that's Russia. a sad ending. So yeah, that's what your kids and their teachers are being exposed to down in Florida. But hey, hey. At least it's not a drag coon. Am I right? Yeah. Right. And finally tonight, in Shodden Fruity. <laughs> Nothing is going well for Rudy Giuliani right now. No. Or ever. And yeah. It was already going very badly for years, but now extra, extra badly. Ever since November of 2020, his main job has been treasonous lying. Before that, it was, you know, mostly just regular lying, and he really should have stuck with that, but he didn't. So now he's a criminal defendant in Georgia. He lost a giant defamation suit. He declared bankruptcy. His creditors are demanding an overseer to control his finances. He might get kicked out of the legal profession entirely. And now he's being prosecuted in Arizona after getting served the indictment at his secret public birthday party in Florida. I'm smiling so hard. My face hurts from all yeah. the mm-hmm. smiling. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was going to write that I think all that's left is a shower shenanigan that turns him blue, but then I remembered the time his hair tie melted down his face during a press <laughs> conference, which is literally worse than that. It is. So, yeah. It is, but I, I'm still down for a smurfing if you are. I, I think we'll get the <laughs> So <laughs> Paul Giamatti had to go to a funeral while he was blue. And I think about that all the time. He did. Listen, I think using smurfing like that is perfect to block a lot of Eli's talking crimes. Right? <laughs> Just hey, smurf wait, over a lot of the like stuff he says. Smurf. Eli's going to smurf the shit out of Alito Brett the next Kavanaugh. time he sees him. You're allowed to maybe do that, right? Yeah. Maybe. Say hi. We'll, we'll find out. We'll if see. we're in jail. <laughs> yeah, so, right. Just in case anyone's not familiar, Rudy Giuliani was one of Donald's personal attorneys. He's the one who looks like a penguin after an oil spill, Yep, the Batman villain, and led the greatest press conference of all time during the greatest moment of all time at Four Seasons Total Landscaping. That was in November of 2020. And among his many lies ever since, while aiding and abetting a failed coup, Giuliani defamed two election workers in Georgia. They sued him and a jury ordered him to pay $148 $148 million. He does not have that. And he declared bankruptcy. And here's the latest. Last week, the law firm representing his many creditors noticed that he continues to be a liar and an idiot. So they demanded, like seriously, a grown up to oversee his allowance money, basically. In particular, their filing mentioned that he's been spending way too much on Amazon and Apple. Like apps? I, guess, I don't know. And and that he failed to disclose a new income source. That would be a new Rudy-themed line of coffee from from Burke Brands called Rudy Coffee. Okay, look, I get that the continued support for Donald Trump is largely about not admitting that you made bad choices. But if you're buying the coffee named after his ex-lawyer, this might not be about politics anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. But holy hell is bullshit coffee by an evil person a thriving sector of the economy these days, right? (laughs) Guys, should we start a coffee brand? I think we should. I like it. I think we have to be evil first. I'll do it. So Giuliani's creditors (laughs) are also looking to make him sell his condo in Florida that's worth about $3.5 million. And they explained how that doesn't make Giuliani become homeless as he claimed. He really tried to claim that. According to another filing from the creditor's law firm, quote, the debtor, Giuliani, also resorts to histrionics, asking, surely the committee does not intend the debtor, me, to join the ranks of the homeless. He actually tried to claim that. They continued, it seems hardly worth pointing out that there is a vast gulf of housing options between residing in an approximately $3.5 million Palm Beach condominium and homelessness. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but in Rudy's defense, you can't be like, yeah, just go ahead and sell your house, get that money together, and we'll definitely leave you enough of that money to have a new place to live. Uh, <laughs> so, but but now here's the real question, though. If Rudy is reduced to homelessness, will he have himself bust out of the city and shot? Or Yeah, exactly. <laughs> killed, killed on Christmas Eve, exactly. Yeah. Then he gets flown back in by DeSantis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
This will be fun. So it sounds like Giuliani could really use a big source of income right now, perhaps from his job as a lawyer. And he's getting disbarred in Washington, D.C. So happy. He already lost his license to practice law in New York. And last week, the D.C. Board on Professional Responsibility determined that Giuliani's treasonous lying in specifically Pennsylvania was, in fact, treasonous lying, and they made an official recommendation that Giuliani not be allowed to practice law in the nation's capital anymore. If the D.C. Court of Appeals agrees with that recommendation, that would make Giuliani entirely jobless or, I guess, at best, a professional coffee mascot. Yeah. (laughs) And if you listen to the bonus content over on Scathing Atheist, you know that that market is currently dominated by Doug the Pug in our hearts and minds. There you go. (laughs) I've, yeah, I've never felt like coffee mascot should require a licensure before, but these days I'm not so sure, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that brings us to the best part, the indictment for his crimes in Arizona. The felony charges were announced in April, and apparently Giuliani spent the next several weeks trying to avoid being physically handed the paperwork for his indictment. That's not a thing. Don't try and do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made the following post on Twitter. It had a picture of him surrounded by partygoers and birthday balloons, and it said, quote, If Arizona authorities can't find me by tomorrow morning, one, they must dismiss the indictment, and two, what? they must concede they can't count votes, end quote. He, he thought he was winning at a running man? Yeah, right. Yep. Like, like, was he really trying to avoid arrest <laughs> using this one simple trick? He really was. He's an attorney. Well, he was. a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Such an idiot. So, yeah, that's not how anything works, huh. just to be clear. But No? Is that not how crimes work? <laughs> no, no. The cops it not actually have to tell you if they're undercover? And turn into a fucking <laughs> pumpkin of an indictment, you and then you're fine. You have to tag both hands no. before midnight. None of that. You got my shirt. <laughs> You just got my shirt. <laughs> we said one hand touch. I was but a lawyer. More and a mayor <laughs> during 9-11. Yeah. Of America's biggest city. It was- God <sighs> damn it. I okay. don't think we've been doing a great job, guys. I'm going to throw that out there. No, we have not. But I'm adding to this part. He got served with his indictment. Two hours after that tweet. (laughs) Less than two hours, actually. Between that tweet and several video streams that he posted over those weeks when he was like on the lam doing that one simple trick. Between all that stuff, the staff for the Arizona Attorney General's office was very easily able to find him in Florida. And as he walked out of his birthday party to his car at the end of the night... They handed him the indictment paperwork. <laughs> He's charged with nine felonies. He's pleaded not guilty. We'll see how it goes. Well, you know, Trump and his surrogates have been doing great in court. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah maybe it's easier because it's only nine things he has to defend. Or maybe it's harder because it's only nine things they have to prosecute. Good luck, bud. On that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to a whole bunch of prosecutors. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that, please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Heath Enright's husband, yeah. Lori Ayers, oh. Jer, ha. Tom Gallagher, Hi-ya. Keisha, Maddie B, Charles Basner, Obi-Wan, Jeffrey Cowell, Nathan and Mary Winkling, Ha-ha. Agnes Bell, Heath and the Vegan, nice. Kitsu Nalane, Apostate Apotheosis, Woo. Angry German, Vincent, Dangerous. Ranger Danger, Mark Riddle, Don Underwood, The Lali Lule Lo, John Langdon, Molly Jane Sear, Data Woo. Angel, Nicole, Furious Typist, That Guy with the SGU Tattoo, Woo. Danny Zombre, Kyle, Roger Kane, Jesus Crotch, 33rd yes. Cookie, Marjorie Worthington, Brandon Cure, Friend, Ray Atkinson, The Wooden Dude, Pinocchio. Fantastic O2, Always the Claimant, Never the Named, Kirsten, Cherry Shoot, yeah, Namate, Dylan Bobbitt, Andrew Gibson, and hey. Aiden Briggs. The Briggsinator. You are the ground coffee and petrichor of human beings, and we 
love you. Fuck yeah. We and do. whether or not you almost changed financially benevolent like those five people. <laughs> if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. One guy. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. I think it's a couple other guys. Now I'm not even sure. You should definitely check them out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. giant paws in there. <laughs> so only way he'll learn. That's right. So Ron DeSantis has now ordered, and I think this is three years in a row, that during the, the month of June, all uh, bridges in the state have to fly red, white, and blue, or have to have red, white, and blue lights as like patriotism month or whatever, but it's it, it's to block pride month celebrations, right? Right. They don't want rainbow. What? Yeah, he he won't like because most of the cities in the in the state will just put rainbow lights on all the on the, uh, all the bridges, and that's too damn gay for him. What happened in Jacksonville uh, yesterday is a bunch of fucking people just showed up with different colored flashlights and like for an hour yes. and a half shined rainbow lights off the fucking bridge as Amazing. a huge fuck you to to DeSantis. I love that so much. Um, so good. But yeah, really fucking dark that that's the kind of shit that they're resorting to. Also, that's too gay. Don't let them have any pretty bridges. Certain wavelengths of the visible light spectrum are offensive to them philosophically. That's the, ones just the, light, the visible like, spectrum in general is offensive to them. Yeah. If, if all of it together would be offensive. Yeah. yeah. Because here's the thing, right? We hate ideas. We are people who hate ideas, right? We hate the ideas of the Bible. We hate the ideas of the Quran. The idea that we would ever see colored lights celebrating any of those ideas and be like, I don't know that they should have those. Like, it's so <laughs> right. silly. <laughs> right. It's so fucking petty. If they were in the habit of lighting shit up with a rainbow as like a, a nod to the Noah's Ark story or something, yeah, we wouldn't freak out about the goddamn colors of the spectrum. Only blue lights today. Yeah. God. <laughs> Did God make the colors separately during Genesis and some were good and some were bad? Like, yeah, what they were all happening? hanging out in the firmament with all the water from the flood. I want the fucking photons fully miscegenated like that. Only these three colors work right now. What the fuck? One of my favorite uh, creationist arguments of all time is when people pointed out that if there was enough water in the firmament to flood the fucking earth, that there was no way the sun could shine through it. Right. They'd be like, well, then how would sun get through for, for things to grow? And so they said, no, it would be water vapor. It was all vapor at that time, which blocks out more sunlight than water. I mean, have you seen yes. water vapor before? Don't do a science. Yeah, right. Just no, like, just do a religion. You're bad lane. enough at that. So. It is in your, you don't have to play on our field. Stop coming into our field and being like, all right, one more time. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.